Today, we dive a bit deeper into the world of Diablo as we wander once again through the tales of Sanctuary. Through these collections of short stories, we catch glimpses of various character concepts and ideas behind some of the elements within the world of Diablo. Presented as an anthology to the success of Diablo 2, these graphic novels help to expand the world behind Diablo. Today, we continue with a story called The Hand of Nas. Originally published in 2001 by Dark Horse Comics, authored by Phil Amara, and the art by Francisco Ruiz Velasco. In the land of Dakinshar, where each day can be your last, here a new battle rages between barbarians, the children of Volcathos, and the demon army. Once gone for centuries, but now they have returned under Bale's malevolent leadership. These lands, otherwise known as the Vermilion Fields, where pockets of flame still roar, consuming everything in sight. Desolate as these lands may be, echoes of steel can still be heard across these tainted lands. Amidst a sea of blood and death, only one warrior survives this day. Alongside his ally, he helps this fallen warrior make their final journey across the Vale, the one called Rennet the Darkstalker. Whether it is luck or fate that has spared him, he makes a solemn promise. His resolve now realized. The sinister forces of Achjaden, the demon army, may have won this battle, but on his vengeful heart and sacred oath, they will not win the war, whatever the price. As he mounts his horse and begins his journey, having only vengeance as his guide, he finally reaches the outskirts of a small settlement and he hears the all-too-familiar sounds of demons in the distance. <clears throat> the demon army is near. Filling with rage and fire, he readies his sword. Thunder and hooves is all that can be heard as he makes his way toward the sounds of battle. Arriving not a moment too soon, a woman inches away from certain doom as a grotesque creature of night and magic leaps toward her, the arachnid's fangs dripping with a bright ichor. Feeling like no more than a span of a heartbeat, Rennet cleaves the creature's frame in two. Not a second later, the woman calls out, Look out! After the words left her lips, a horde of crawlers surrounded them. Their numbers seemed to be on counting, and if not for the dimly lit flames or their glowing eyes, the ground would simply appear to be moving all on its own. As the swirling darkness grew, the barbarian unleashed a whirl of steel and rage. As he swung, it wasn't madness or blind fury that guided each swing, but an accuracy that had clearly been honed by a lifetime of battle and hard-won strength. Within that moment of time, all that remained was a crumpled pile of arachnid flesh and sinew. Globs of ichor oozed off the edge of his axe as he readied for another wave, but none came. The woman, huddled in the corner, finally managed to speak. Oh, there's... There's no one here but me. You... you saved me. The demon army, where are you, foul creatures? Show yourselves, and I'll help you to the spirit world. Still raring for battle, Rennet held fast, waiting. And for that, I must repay you, heal you. The woman placed her hands upon the barbarian's chest. For a moment, nothing seemed to happen. But soon after, a warmth began to fill the barbarian's body. Light began to emanate from the woman's hands. Startled by this development, Rennet grabbed the woman by the wrist. <laughs> the creatures that lay at my feet are no match for Rennet the Darkstalker. His face becoming stony and placid. I hunt for greater prey, the hellspawn hordes that have freshly slain my comrades. I will not rest until every fallen warrior is avenged. The woman, taking back her hand. Then let me aid you in your task, so that my people too may be avenged. Fragments of images filled the woman's mind as she recalled the countless members of her order who had been slain by the very demons the barbarian sought. I, Cairo, have been traveling in the wake of the sun searching for the same demon army that slaughtered my brethren and scorched this land. Sadly, I am a necromancer possessed of meager power, a mere apprentice to a master. Now slain, I cannot avenge him. 
She stiffened slightly and averted her gaze as she looked downward. I fear even you would be dispatched by so deadly a foe. Anger began to swell within the barbarian. Ha! I'll destroy them all. None shall know mercy. The woman quickly placed a hand on Rennet's face, feeling the weathered lines on his countenance. Stay your anger this day. After a brief moment, she motioned to the desk beside them, revealing a tomb sprawled across its surface. Its bindings were weathered and gnarled. Many of the pages had already been frayed or damaged by ages of neglect. As she flipped through a few pages, she finally stopped at a particularly worn section of the book. Legend tells of an ancient artifact, the Hand of Nas. With this gauntlet, a wearer can summon a spectral army to do his bidding and grant his darkest wish. She continued. With this spectral army to command, we can destroy our common enemy. She moved close to the barbarian, running her hand across his bare chest, her body close enough to feel his warmth. Will you join my quest? With you by my side, we will surely retrieve the hand of Nas. The barbarian, after scanning her face for a moment, replied, I will join you. He said with a seriousness that now binded their fates, while his mind still raced with thoughts of destruction and revenge. And vengeance shall be mine, he thought to himself. After some time had passed, the pair had finally reached their destination. A great fortress stood before them. It towered as it stood with curved walled structures appearing like the demon horns of hell itself, crowned with a titanic skull atop its features. As they journeyed closer to their destination, the area began to only possess the faintest wisps of life. Nothing seemed to grow in this inhospitable land, and the very ground itself seemed to seethe with darkness and contempt with each encroaching step. It was difficult to tell how much time had actually passed, for as they traveled closer to their ambition's end, they couldn't recall when they had last seen the sun. The sky that now loomed above them was dark and still, with streaks of intertwining cerulean twilight. The trail leads here, to the castle of Kanamath. What evils await us within this fabled fortress? I do not know. The barbarian began to tighten his grip on his axe. Any man or creature fool enough to bar my way will quickly meet his gods. A thin, arched smile formed at the end of Cairo's lips. Still, dread warrior, you must be cautious. Not all dangers are conspicuous. From the inside of the fortress, a loud thum could be heard, echoing across the halls and corridors. A loud, continuous, and vicious clash reverberated across each of its high ceilings. Suddenly, the iron pins binding the wooden doors began to give way. As it splintered and fractured, shards of iron and material flew in all directions as the massive and ancient doors gave way, slamming into the ground with a sound that would be enough to wake the dead. As the dust finally settled, the silhouette of a massive being stood in their wake, the barbarian. The last resting place of the Hand of Nas is a secret tomb beneath this castle. Moving ahead, the barbarian simply replied, Then stop wasting time, apprentice. I have demons to kill. As they ventured forward through the darkness with only a torch to light the way, they finally reached the foul depths of this secret crypt. At last, the necromancer whispered, as they reached the final crypt where an ornate relief etched atop of a stone sarcophagus was found. The barbarian wasted no time and easily hefted the massive stone cover aside, revealing the remains of a king. He was surprised to see that the body was so remarkably well preserved. There, warrior. The fabled gauntlet rests with a king, his body preserved by unseen magics. The barbarian, fueled by rage and vengeance, needed no other assurances as he reached for the item. And now, necromancer, it's mine. As he removed the gauntlet from the decrepit hand, a dull grinding sound could be heard in the distance. Oblivious of his surroundings, the barbarian continued his grim task. The necromancer, seeming uneasy, motioned to the barbarian but was unable to gain his attention. At that moment, 
the area around them began to churn and tremble. Hmm? The ground shakes. Oh, our trespass is cursed. Immediately, every other tomb in the area began to crumble. The ground around them began to split as fingers and limbs began to protrude from every crack. The sickly glow of eyes could be seen all throughout the darkness, varying in size and magnitude. In an instant, they were surrounded by undead, cold, lifeless bodies began clenching and writhing their way towards them. The undead, they rise against us, exclaimed the necromancer, but received no response. She glanced back toward the king's tomb while fighting off numerous cold and rotting bodies as they retched and moved to consume her, but Rennet was already gone. Making his way toward the exit as he easily slashed through hordes of corpses and shambles in his wake. Help me, barbarian. Don't leave me. Was all that she could manage as the last of the light faded from her vision and the countless dead continued their assault. Governed by wrath and savagery, the barbarian made his way back to the demon-infested fields where he had last seen the demon army. Wearing the gauntlet at last, the Barbarian had the power needed to decimate the demons entirely. Today, foul beasts. Today you die. The air behind the Barbarian began to shimmer, and soon ethereal outlines of armor, shields, and helmets began to appear. Rows upon rows of armored warriors glimmered faintly in the light as the Barbarian gripped the gauntlet tighter. The silhouettes of each soldier glared, giving them a clear shape and form. Countless wraith-like warriors now stood behind the Barbarian. By my command, paint the land with their blood. The area surrounding the hordes of demons became as if covered by a deep crimson fog of blood and limbs. The cries and screams of each demon were short but guttural as the specters made short work of them. Each wraith was unencumbered by the countless bodies that now piled around them as they passed through the slain and toward their intended targets. Each attack by the demons only found one another as they frantically swung their weapons through their foes. Nearing the end of battle, one specter separated from the group and began making its way toward the barbarian. Eh? What's this? Return to the front, rogue. Wait. No. I know this face. It is the visage of the dead king. He comes for me? <laughs> I know not what force instructs you, but you'll not have the head of Renit the- The undead king drove his sword straight through the chest of the barbarian, ending his life just as quickly as he had that of the demons. The wraith simply turned back toward the fray and walked away. As the barbarian lay on the ground, he could feel his very life force leaving his body. Welcome back, barbarian. As he began to stir, he noticed the faint outlines of what appeared to be the woman from earlier. Necromancer, but how? Rest, fool. Resurrection is a trying experience, and I have much to tell you, to confess. As she placed her fingers on his forehead, warmth began to surge throughout the barbarian's body, her fingers becoming as if lit by a candle flame. You were lost to the undead. In the tomb of the king, I saw it. Yes, trapped. No thanks to you. Were I truly an apprentice, I would have met my fate. But I am no apprentice. I am Cairo of the Bright Circle. Cairo, daughter of Mech. Cairo, the master. Struggling to his feet. Cairo, uh, the liar. <laughs> Not all lies. Though I am no acolyte, my brethren were slain by the demon army when I was but a girl. I've trained for years, waiting patiently for revenge. When I discovered the legend of Naz, I knew that I must find the gauntlet. But why could it only be worn once? Instinct told me that it came with a price. But what? My question led me to this forsaken land where I found your barbarian army, besieged by demons. From there, I hatched a plan. <laughs> Those spiders, they were no real threat to you, the barbarian said, as he finally managed to stand. It was mere theater, a way to bring you to me, 
to test your arrogance and bloodlust. I hoped you would be enticed by the gauntlet. You became my pawn to gauge its power and glean its curse. I knew of the undead that guarded the tomb if the gauntlet was disturbed. And I knew you would abandon me. <laughs> to defeat your enemies for you. It was the plan all along. Don't be sour. We are both victorious this day. For your role, I have returned you to the land of the living to defeat new foes. Would you rather a life of infinite servitude, forever marching with the spectral army, as a reward for use of the gauntlet? The necromancer placed the glove on a large stone beside them. The bright jewel that decorated it glistened upward. Now, I must complete my task. The jewel of Naz is the real prize. Within is the knowledge of all those tempted by the gauntlet. Using the pommel of her sword, she drove down with force, smashing the jewel entirely. Immediately, the area around her began to glow. Faint cries of the damned could be heard in the wind as if whispered, while their faces could be seen as subtle manifestations in the air. Their souls, at least, are returned to the afterlife. But their knowledge is mine. As she drew in the last of the energy and began to make her way toward her horse. Now, Renet the Dark Stalker, our time together draws to a close, and new adventures await me. She began to ride off into the distance, leaving the barbarian standing shakily. We shall not meet again. <laughs>